So vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes, they occur, uh, vertical asymptotes occur when a rational function function at a value for x at a value for x is undefined so what I mean by that is let's first figure out what a rational function is a rational function is a polynomial function ratioed with another polynomial function or a ratio of two polynomial functions an example of such would be 3x plus 1 over x. So that's a polynomial function. That's a polynomial function. There are two of them. They're ratios, ratio of polynomial functions. This specific function would create uh, a situation where the r of x would be undefined where? At r of 0. Why? Because if I put 0 into that x, I'll get 0 plus 1, which is 1, divided by 0. So r of 0 in this particular function is 1 over 0, which is undefined. I don't know what it means to divide by 0. No clue. So it's undefined. So I cannot plot any points. And so the situation is this. If I were to go and plot a whole bunch of values, if you were, I'm not going to because it's going to take too much, too long to do that. And this is the fourth time I've done this video because it just keeps getting too long. If I put in a negative 1, uh, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1 half, 1 half, negative 1 quarter, 1 quarter, etc., etc., we would find for this function, we would get the following. If this is x, uh, y equals 3, and this is uh, 1, negative 1, and this is 1, what we would find is the following we would graph the following function. And I'll explain the horizontal asymptote in a different video. We would get this thing here and this guy here. Our function would be this orange stuff. And we would get this horizontal asymptote, again, explained in a different video, and this vertical asymptote. This vertical asymptote is occurring right at x equals 0. So our vertical asymptotes are always going to be x equals some value some real number um, and it doesn't and there isn't just only one we could have more than one so as another example and then I'll close out the video we could have this function uh, 3x cubed plus 7x squared minus 5 over x squared minus let's say 7 so first of all let's factor that um, polynomial function in the denominator. Uh, this one was easy because I could just see that zero was this situation, right? So I'm going to tell you now what my strategy all the time is. This one I can do in my head, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do it the long way, the way that you should probably approach all of them until you can see them very, very easily. If you want to know when this denominator goes to zero, well, you're basically asking, hey, when does this equal zero? Well, can't you figure this out by doing the following, creating a relationship? When does this thing, x squared minus 7, my denominator, when does that equal 0? Or you could also say it this way. For what x values will this thing equal 0? And if I set up an equation, I can do that. Now, you can add 0 to both sides and square root both sides, or you could factor. Both of them work. And so I end up getting x minus the square root of 7 and x plus the square root of 7. Uh, if you saw that this wasn't a perfect square and it deterred you from seeing it as the difference of two squares, almost anything, a square root minus any number is going to be a difference of two squares. It just happens that you're dealing with a square root value. So my roots for this polynomial function are negative square root of 7, negative square root of 7, and positive square root of 7. But that also tells me that at square root of 7 and negative square root of 7, this denominator goes to 0. So for this polynomial equation, my graph would look something like square root of 
square root of 7, negative square root of 7, I would have vertical asymptotes here denoted by dotted lines and a vertical asymptote here denoted by that, that line. Now, there's some other stuff going on here. I would have to do some other work to figure out what the other asymptotes are, the non-vertical ones, but I'm guessing it's going to be something like this, and it's a crazy slant asymptote, and my function might look like something like this. Okay? And I have no idea. I could be absolutely wrong in the positions of these curves. It could be this kind of thing. Uh, but I know for certain that my vertical asymptotes are here. This other slant asymptote, I'm going to show you how to figure that out because you'll need to. So that's it with vertical asymptotes. Good luck.